All right, guys, before I start replacing the tensioners, I do want to point out and make it very clear that I have never done this before. So proceed following my instructions at your own risk. So best case, you're going to see exactly how to do this. Worst case, you're going to get a good laugh at me messing it up. So here we go. So the very first step we're going to do is go back here and remove this panel. We need access to the front of the engine. Now, I have a separate video on exactly this. So instead of videoing it again, here is a link. If you need to know how to do that, go click on that and then come back here. All right, hopefully yours looks like this now. Uh, so the next step is to turn the crank, which is that one down there it is a 24 millimeter socket you're going to need to turn it and where you can see right here where that little line is that's what you want to have lined up for top dead center and sadly for me this teardrop shaped one right here is the one that has to uh, come over to where this hole is over here approximately so I have to turn the engine almost one full turn to get it there. So it just leads me to something else nobody ever talks about. Do you have to take the belt off to do this? So I got to put it in neutral at least, I assume. I don't know. Let's figure it out. Okay, so I got the 24 millimeter down there. And I got this uh, little ratchet with a little extension so I can get some more leverage on it. You do not need to take off the belt, I'm told. Which makes sense because it doesn't really matter if any of that stuff turns. So this is one of the things that nobody talks to you about though. Um, when I turn this, it is turning the engine over a little, but the nut is turning faster than the engine. So it feels like it's, or looks like it is tightening that nut down or that the nut is slightly spinning while the engine turns, which I don't know if that will stop after a while. Maybe it's just loose on my car, but you can see how it's not turning at the same rate. So, oh, here we go. Still kind of doing the same thing. Maybe if I move it faster, feels better, I guess. Yeah, maybe it's just moving it too slow. I don't know. Anyway, you want to turn it clockwise, not counterclockwise. So I'm just turning and looking for that teardrop-shaped hole. All right, because you're going to want to stop it before it gets to the 12 o'clock position. Okay, here comes the teardrop hole. So when this other non-teardrop hole lines up with this mark, that's about when the teardrop hole is in the right place. So I'm just gonna turn it a little bit more and get it close. So at this point, I'm gonna get out my cheapo Amazon Porsche camshaft toolkit that has these things in here and this one is supposed to be the right size to stick in there and lock it. it also comes with a longer one but i think you're supposed to use the short one uh, or if you don't have one of these you can use a 5 16th inch drill bit or possibly an eight millimeter maybe there's a metric size too but that is the right size to stick in here so right now uh, i'm gonna use two hands and with one hand, I'm going to turn this. With the other hand, I'm going to start sticking this in so it'll drop in when it lines up. Okay, I'm going to try to not drop this thing down here. Right, finagle this in here and hold it here and turn this. All right, I can kind of feel it going in a little there. Turn in. Okay, there, it just dropped in. Okay, so that should be a top dead center. If you look really close down here, you can see that little notch. So it is true what I was told before. So, okay, so we are at top dead center and locked. All right, so far not so bad. After our engine is locked, we need to raise the car. So I have my quick check, which is fantastic. 
All right, before I get under the car, I recently had the chance to look at a Boxster engine that was out of a car, so it's a lot easier to see where things are. So let me show you that real quick before we get underneath. So you can see under here is one of the tensioners. And our other tensioner is right here. So one and two. So those are pretty easily accessed with the engine still in the car. Okay guys, I just want to use this picture as an example to show you where the layout is so to get you some orientation. So when you are under the car, this big circle in the middle is where your transmission mounts to your engine, if you didn't know that. That circle right in the middle is your rear main seal. You might have heard of that. And the one below that has a little oil feed that is not stock going into it is your IMS bearing. In this picture, we can see both of the chain tensioners that we're going to replace. On the left here is the horizontal one with the arrow. That is the first one that we're going to replace. And then there is a vertical one with this arrow on the right hand side that we're going to replace second. All right, sadly, somehow I did not get a good picture of the front of the engine, but this is the engine just spun around. So the uh, tensioners are on the opposite sides from the other picture. So here is the vertical tensioner somewhere down here. And here's the horizontal tensioner somewhere over here. And to the far left in this picture, this is where your camshaft is. And this is where we're gonna use a special tool to insert this in and lock your camshaft. So you'll see that in a few minutes. But if the video from under the car gets confusing at any point, just come back to this picture and reorient yourself with where you are. Okay, so now that you have seen that, let's get under here and see what it's gonna look like for you. Okay, so you probably have a big plastic panel right here that looks like that. Go ahead and remove that with some little eight millimeter nuts, I believe. And then you can see the bottom of your engine. Here's our oil filter. And right next to our oil filter, you can see there is the uh, horizontal tensioner that we're gonna be removing. And if you look along the bottom, here is the vertical one that we're gonna be replacing. And you can see back here, it has a little two ring mark. First time I looked at this, it kind of looked like three rings, but one of them is just the edge here. Uh, so there are two rings right here. So if we slide back to the one by our oil filter, you can see it's marked up here, but there is one ring there for this one that has one ring. And this ring is actually like a, a groove instead of an external ring sticking up. It is a groove. Okay, so if we slide back over to this one and you follow the header all the way up closer to the front of the car, uh, here you're gonna see your belts and you can actually see my tool that is still in there to turn the engine. So on the face of this right here, if you come over to the corner, this light over here, over here kind of to the corner of the block and you can see this green and this green cap up here that is where the tool is going to go to lock the cams there's a little slit in here that it will fit into so that it can't turn and this little nub right here is where the tool actually locks onto the engine block so the way to remove these things is I'm gonna get a little pick and puncture this and actually pull it off so these things are not reusable. I hear that some mechanics actually try to put a little uh, dab of something to patch that up and reuse these, but not a good idea. I also asked a mechanic friend of mine if I needed to put them on right away or if it's safe to drive the car without them since they are still on order. And his answer was if they are like the track cars that he has seen where they fall off, then it will spray oil everywhere. So you do not want to drive without them. So this is the tool that came in my Amazon kit, uh, I believe is supposed to be what locks this. So I think once I remove the green uh, plastic pieces there, this slides in this way, I'm guessing. And uh, there's this 
cable that's in the way. So maybe it goes under it and then goes in like this. And the little pin goes through this hole and that right there to lock it in place. I don't know. I'm going to pull these caps off now and see what happens. All right, I don't think it's supposed to dump oil or anything, but just in case I'm prepared here. So this is the little tool that I'm gonna use to jab that thing and pull it out. So here goes nothing. Oh man, this thing is sturdy. I think it just bent my tool. Hey. Yeah, when they just say stick it in and pull it out. <sighs> yeah, I never believe anybody. Okay, new strategy. I got a straight. Let's try to puncture it first. Uh, okay, there we go. So with that one. I got enough force to push straight ahead and puncture it. Now, maybe that there's a hole in it, I can hook it. Oh. All right, got it into the hole. Oh, holy crap. Don't really have a way to get leverage on it. Okay, let's try another tool. Just try to jab a screwdriver through. <sighs> Ouch. Alright, let's try with two hands and a tripod. Alright, we got the screwdriver in. And with the screwdriver we can get a little leverage. Okay, it's prying off. Okay. Much better. So these are our $16 caps. So that's what it looks like from down here without the cap. Uh, it's tough to get my phone in here to show it to you closer. But uh, here it is. I'm gonna tilt my phone to see in there, but those two slots are supposed to be lined up perfectly vertically for timing to be correct uh it's kind of hard to see from here when i stick my finger in here i can feel the slot and feel the groove here and it feels very centered so next i'm gonna pull the upper green cap off now all right i used the same jab a, a small flathead screwdriver through the end approach from down here this one was even harder sucked to get it started and I'm gonna try to pry it off it's coming yeah okay got it you can see that the uh, center is hollow and it's got like a metal washer kind of on the inside so you have to go right through the middle that is what that one looks like so now i'm going to take the tool and try to stick it in here no idea how this is going to go it feels like it is kind of in the right location of where it's supposed to be ah, fucker. It seems like maybe this part is too thick to fit in here so i'm just going to try to stick it in like this All right, so I had assumed that this thing with the kit would go through both of those holes to lock it in place, but uh, it does not fit through here. It is a through hole. I can feel it come through, but not for this. All right, doing a little bit of measurement of the uh, little gap that we have that can fit the tool in there, and, and it looks like it's a 3.53 best I can come up with with these. And this tool that has to fit in that little gap is a solid 5.71.
So I'll spare you the struggle, but I could not get that tool to lock in the budget one from Amazon. So there is uh, another green cover that is covering up this thing right here for bank one. And um, I'm not going to take that cover off because I don't want to have to replace it. But if you did have it off, you could see this little mark here. If it is pointing outward, that means they are uh, locked for bank one. If you turn the engine another full rotation, this will go 180 degrees over here and be pointing inward. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn my engine another uh, 360 degrees to turn these 180 degrees. So this is what the real tool from Porsche looks like. And apparently it is an M8 by 30 bolt that uh, fits in this little thing to lock it in. So I'm gonna need one of those bolts as well. All right, spin it around one more revolution clockwise. So the gap on this one seems to be about the same. So, so much for the theory that it's larger on the other side. All right, I stuck my phone up here and took a picture of this and this is what it looks like. So it looks like my timing is good. It looks pretty darn vertical to me. Uh, so I am just thinking that the tool is uh, kind of crappy and does not fit. So I'm gonna start looking for a new tool, I guess. I guess another uh, attempt that I could do would be to grind this a little down so that it would be thinner and fit in there, so I don't know, maybe I'll try that. So according to this little sketch, the part you put the bolt through is supposed to be two millimeters thick, and the part that locks it is supposed to be four millimeters thick. Uh, mine is like five and three quarters millimeter thick over here, and it's uh, almost four there, so I'm going to try to trim this thing down. All right, more information that I'm finding out thanks to the forums is this one here is for the five chain. You can see that on the bottom here, it has a slot for the cam on the bottom because as you saw on mine, there are no slots in the top one. And it says that uh, you can only lock the bottom one, which is fine because the two camshafts are connected with another chain. And this one down here, this long style that I have is actually for the three chain because for the three chains, the cam on top has a slot in it as well and it will lock both of them in place. All right, we got this thing shaved down to close to four and a half millimeters. Now, don't be a dumbass and forget that it's super hot and touch it with your ungloved hand. Don't ask me how I know that. Oh snap. All right, it fits now and it uh, goes in the groove and locks in. So now I just have to get the uh, correct bolt up here to attach it. All right, so I found this old bolt in my drawer of spare bolts and uh, it threads in. So I'm gonna clean this thing up a little bit and use it. All right, the one I found is a 13 millimeter. All right, so the good thing is when you're tightening it and it's getting torqued down, it is twisting it, it twist the plate down that way, it feels like at least. Okay, so it should be locked. So now that the cams are locked, we can do the two tensioners, one here again, and the other one over here. And it is indeed 32 millimeters. I have a big 32 millimeter socket on here. Now, most of the time you're gonna probably have all of the oil out of your car, but as an experiment, because I am curious how much oil is gonna come out of here, if I take these out with the oil still in the car, I'm gonna leave the oil in and uh, we're gonna find out. So since I have no idea what's gonna happen in case it comes shooting out of here, I have some aluminum foil for my British subscribers uh, to keep oil off of this because I don't want to smell it burning off for a long time. And I got a big tarp down here and we're prepared to catch some oil. So let's see what happens. All right, are you guys excited? I know I am, oh gosh. Here goes nothing. Literally nothing.
Yeah, okay, there's some uh, the little spring force it popped out. And here comes some engine oil. So I'll come back and we'll see how much came out. So this is the uh, tensioner. I can squeeze it pretty much all the way in pretty easily. And you can see oil coming out of that hole, hole when I do it. Okay, so let's compare the old with the new. I heard that they made some changes and this is a modified one. The new one obviously here on the right and the one on the left and I heard that they made it a little taller as well, which uh, as you can see, that is the case. It is a little bit taller. I'll measure them here in a second. Uh, so they both have this hole on the bottom, but the new one has two holes on the top Whereas the old one, um, it has something, not a hole. But you can see the old one has an interesting wear pattern. You can see a dark brown around there, but then when you rotate it around, it goes kind of back to the silver. So uh, a lot of wear on this side. The top has some signs of wear. Compared to the top of the new one, the bottom other than being dirty looks the same. Uh, actually these are rounded corners and these are sharp corners. So I'm gonna guess that they probably did that so you can just look at it and tell if you have the newer one. So that's a, kind of a cool little tip. If you look at it from the outside, you can tell if you have the new one or not. And as far as pressure, yeah. okay, I can pretty much make it travel the whole way, but it is very difficult. And eh, it's actually, about the same as the old one. It's really not a whole lot stiffer. So this thing's coming in handy today. Let's measure, see how many millimeters our old one is. The old one we have is about 92 millimeters. And our new one is coming in at 93 millimeters. So they added one millimeter to the new one. I don't know if this is a necessary step, but I'm gonna take the new one that I'm gonna be replacing and stick it in some new motor oil here. And uh, just press this and air bubbles are coming out. So I just wanna fill this up with new oil before it goes back in the car. And that way it gets the O-ring wet too. All right, it's probably been a good 15 minutes since I took this off and it is uh, just barely dripping now out of here. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, put our new one in. Let's clean up the oil around here. And now's a good time to remember to take the foil off. You don't wanna leave that under your car. And there was no oil at all on the foil, so that was unnecessary. Don't do that. Okay, guys, important, being the dumb rookie that I am, I almost forgot to put on this washer. So make sure that goes on first. And then you're gonna put it in and there will be pressure, so you're gonna have to press it in while you get it threaded. All right, and then once it's threaded, just go ahead and tighten it by hand. All right, for everybody playing at home, the torque spec is 59 foot-pounds. Here we go. Approximately two and a half quarts came out from the other one, so I emptied my bucket a little bit, and we're gonna try this one now. Right, 
expecting this to pop out once the threads come off again. Yep, there's the pop and yank. This tensioner is a lot stronger than the other one. I can only compress it a millimeter or two. Yeah, so this tensioner is a lot stronger than the one on the other side. I can only compress it like a millimeter or two with my left hand. So we'll let this drain and I'll go compare the new one to this one. All right, old bank one tensioner and new bank one tensioner. So I see the immediate similarities again between these two. This has the rounded edges and this has the square edges or corners, I guess I should say. Uh, they both have a hole right above the threads. Uh, you can see that this one is actually designed differently in the middle. There is more trimmed off here in this section, whereas that one is solid most of the way up with just two little trimmed ridges. And uh, this one again has two holes on top. Well, this one looks like it has a plugged hole on top. Uh, they both have a hole in the very top and let's see. okay well the old one is noticeably easier to squeeze than the new one it is a lot firmer and let me measure them again Okay, the old tensioner is about 91 and a half millimeters. A new one is almost 96 millimeters. So a big difference in size. Again, do not forget the washer. I'm not gonna bother squeezing the oil into it because I can't compress it enough to squeeze the oil into it. On this side for me, the old washer uh, stayed up here and it was stuck. It did not come out with the tensioner so I had to flick it off. It landed in my bucket. But I have my new tensioner with my new washer and this is still dripping, but we're gonna stop that. And, oh, this one you're gonna have to apply a lot of pressure. Man, this one's gonna be a little tough. I think I'm gonna let some more oil drain before I do this because it's making a mess. All right, 30 minutes later, it is still dripping a tiny bit, but I'm impatient. So let's try this again. Oh, did I mention that I cannot wait for about another month when I'm gonna get a lift? All right, so I'm gonna grab the header that is some leverage. Uh, God, it seemed like it was close. Yeah, I think I got it. Oh, yes. Oh, oh yeah. Hallelujah. And this is one tough thing to know you're not cross-threading. All right. Doesn't feel cross threaded. Uh, it is too bad. All right, well, if the problem was a loose chain tensioner, this should definitely fix it. All right, torque on this one is also 58 foot pounds. Which is not very tight. Ah, okay, all done. All right, now while I'm down here, I'm just gonna use the drain plug and drain the rest of our oil. Go ahead and get a little filter change and a complete oil change to knock this out. Whew, okay, the oil has changed. If you don't know how to do that, here's a link to do that. Now, under the car, do not forget to unlock the cams. So I'm just gonna reach back up under here with my 13 millimeter and remove this bolt. All 
Uh, and try not to drop this tool on your face because it hurts. Also, at this point is when you want to replace the green caps. Supposedly, you can just press them back on. I'm sure I'll have to get something to put some leverage on them because they were on there pretty hard. Uh, I do not have them in the mail yet. They are on order, so I will not be doing that until later. Also, remember to pull the pin or drill bit or whatever you have in here out. Don't start your engine like that. All right, looking through the filter, this pleat kind of shows the most particles that I saw anywhere. And it does look like a little bit of the chain uh, guide, the little plastic pieces breaking off. And this is the largest single piece that I found in there. So yeah, it's not a good sign. I think I'll be doing that job shortly. Okay, other than getting the green plugs back on, it is done, so I'm not gonna start the car yet until I get them. All right, so that's not the worst job, but I did hear somebody before say somewhere that it's a 10 minute job, and that is a complete lie. You can't get the back panel off to put the engine in top dead center in 10 minutes, so don't tell me you can do this job in 10 minutes. So if I had purchased the correct tools and had everything ahead of time, and I had this video to show me how to do it, it's at least a two hour job, so uh, I'd give yourself four and you're safe. Had to put this on hold a couple days until these came in. These are the uh, aftermarket ones, I guess, because they're black and not the official green ones, but they're gonna work. All right, so the plan is just pop these on here. See, one side is seated. I want to make sure that it's uh, completely flush like this side over here, though. All right, just gonna use a big old flathead screwdriver and uh, apply some pressure here. All right, uh, this is tough. Oh yeah, by the way, that's where I uh, burned my hand on the tool as I uh, sheared it down with my grinder. All right, there we go. We got it nice and flush. Now for the top one. Still got to work on that left side. This is uh, a pain. I'm just kind of alternating between hands and resting to press that in. Okay, we finally got that one flat. So one thing I was doing let me see if I can show you. So I just took up this big screwdriver, stuck it up here, put the tip on there, and then just kind of used some leverage with both hands. One hand on the top to press it in the right spot, one hand on the bottom with my uh, hand up against this right here. And we finally got it on there. All right, here comes the part that I hope is not super embarrassing and is good news. Uh, I don't know if anybody else is curious if my engine is gonna blow up now, but I kind of am. So I'm gonna start it for the first time and let you guys experience it with me. Here goes nothing. <laughs> Explosions, engine starts. Uh, we'll have to see next time I start it if there is some rattle. I thought I heard a little bit in this one, but some of that was my exhaust. Well guys, I still heard a little bit of rattle. I think I'll have to go back and watch the video, but if the rattle is still there and that did not solve my problem, the next step, according to Jake Raby, my new buddy, is to replace the chain guides. Those plastic bits are definitely breaking off because I see them in my oil. And apparently I can get to the ones that I need to replace without taking the engine out by just removing the cam cover. So stay tuned guys, that's gonna be the next project. If you're not already subscribed to the channel, just click the button. It's really easy, I would appreciate it. It helps the channel. Give the video a thumbs up and I'll see you guys next week.